With me today, I've got Dr. David Gehring. And David's area of expertise is the 16th century Reformation. There are umpteen aspects of the Reformation, but one significant, but not often studied one, is the whole role of maps and the development of mapping in the 16th century and what it was like to have books with printed maps in the 16th century. David, first of all, you're welcome. Tell us something about the significance of cartography in the European Reformation. I like to think about cartography during the 16th century as an indicator of a broad range of social and intellectual developments. Uh, and we can see the renaissance of cartography in a lot of respects, or the revolution of cartography, as symptomatic of a, a broader intellectual shift uh, when it comes to the recovery of the classics, when it comes to uh, a search for, for new knowledge, new forms of knowledge, um, this in the context of the, the age of discovery and the new world, but then also looking back into Europe itself, right? Uh, the, discoveries of discoveries such as they were by Europeans uh, down the, the west coast of Africa, the New World, and to the Asian subcontinent, uh, really opened up, I think, the, the European mind, such as it may have been, uh, to think about the lands around them, to think about the ways they could chart those lands around them. And so when I think about cartography, map making, and, and those uh, making the maps, those using the maps, I think it's part of the fabric of early modern society. And of course there's two elements to 16th century map making. On the one hand, you've got the, the people who are actually going down the west coast of Africa mm -hmm. and going across the North Atlantic, yeah. and they're actually drawing charts. So there are new charts coming on the scene. Mm -hmm. But also there is the recovery of the classical world, there's, mm -hmm. there's the recovery of the geography of Claudius Ptolemy mm -hmm. from the second century of the Common Era. Mm -hmm. And we don't actually know whether originally Claudius actually drew maps, but he gave instructions for drawing maps. And then in the 16th century editions, mm -hmm. we find the maps are drawn mm -hmm. and they are printed in a form that's very much like our atlas. It's a, it's a very recognizable form. It's a, it's a great point, Tom, uh, because we can see the, the maps we're so accustomed to, to seeing now on, on mobile phones, on the internet, in the, the printed atlases we maybe use for driving around uh, the countryside. Uh, they are immediately recognizable in the 16th century, uh, in this, this newer form. But you're exactly right, exactly right about uh, Ptolemy and the recovery of these classics, but one of the interesting things I find about 16th century maps and explorers is that the common assumption that explorers would have been using a lot of these printed new maps and atlases actually falls flat. It's, it's amazing that although some explorers did use maps and did draw some of their own, they actually relied on a lot of very traditional methods. And so when we think of uh, the traditional methods, thinking of uh, word of mouth, uh, dead reckoning, stuff like that, but the maps, whether they're the, the Ptolemaic maps or the maps of Abram Ortelius and Gerard Mercator, uh, these have a slightly different market uh, and they're quite remarkable. And I've, I've got an example uh, here today that we can take a look at if, if we've yeah, got let's, some time. Let's, let's actually look at an actual map. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. That's that's w one of the, one of the maps of Europe from a, a, a 16th century printing of Ptolemy. That's exactly right. Uh, this now this leaf, uh, it's it's my own. Uh, I picked it up in an antiquities shop some years ago. One wonders uh, why, how how a beautiful book was dismembered to create that. You know, okay, that's yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so I picked this one up uh, a number of years ago. Uh, this leaf uh, printed in Venice, 1561. Uh, is it's demonstrating here you can see it's a, a table eight uh, of europe uh, and this is the area of of modern day ukraine uh, with the uh, the baltic to the north and black caspian seas uh, to the south um, part of greater germany uh, over this way 
uh, labeled accordingly. Uh, but maps like this one, uh, the, the, the Ptolemaic recovery uh, of the 15th century, really helped to spurn this renaissance of map making, the more accurate, more recognizable forms. Uh, but as the cartographers uh, of the 16th century came to realize, Ptolemy was profoundly wrong in a lot of ways. Uh, and so one might ask, well, why might it be that Ptolemy's geography gets printed time and time again? Well, in a lot of ways, these are kind of curiosities. Uh, they are maybe owned by people who want to demonstrate their learning of the classics. And so a book like this might not be considered accurate for the 16th century, but it would have been seen as emblematic of this recovery of the classics, the Renaissance itself. And I would go further. Not only is it emblematic of recovering the classics, but there's a new scientific vision there because, of course, Ptolemy had used a grid of latitude and longitude. Yeah. And, of course, no medieval map put latitude on. Mm -hmm. We can see the latitudes running up the two sides. Mm -hmm. We can see the longitude. Mm -hmm. It starts at the Canaries and runs around mm -hmm. and it's running, running across from west to east. So there's an element in which we're not only knowing, we're not only cultured people who are no longer in the darkness. We have recovered the great classical source. Oh, yeah. But we are the new scientific people who are going out there and mm -hmm. we are actually understanding the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's an interesting thing is that, of course, that it's at just at this time that the new Protestant Bibles yes. begin to have maps. That's exactly right, yeah. And even though there are maps usually of the journeys of St. Paul or mm -hmm. there are the maps of the Holy Land, mm -hmm. there are maps that take over their grids mm -hmm. of latitude and longitude mm -hmm. from Ptolemy. That's exactly right. And, and the Bible then is no longer in another world. It is mm -hmm. my world. I can walk, I can yeah. work it out. Yeah. It's in the same grid I'm in. And, and seeing the Holy Land in a form that might be more recognizable in, in a 21st century map sort of way, rather than the old Mapa Mundi, mm. seeing the medieval Holy Land in, in a certain way, it really demonstrates how familiar, maybe, the 16th century can tend to be sometimes for us in the 21st. David, thank you very much for bringing this beautiful map to our attention. You're very welcome. It's a, it's a joy to share.